can we get into the word today? Today I want to preach a message called double portion. Who, who, who wants a double portion of the Holy Spirit? Come on, is there anyone who wants a, a double portion of, of the supernatural? Double portion. Uh, this morning I want to preach a message from the story of Elijah and Elisha. Now, one of the things I'm fascinated by in Scripture is how God uses two generations, one generation to shape another, Mordecai and Esther, Mary and Elizabeth, Paul and Timothy, uh, Moses and Joshua. And God in his supernatural wisdom and planning uses Elijah to shape the next generation, which of course is Elisha. The story we're going to pick up out of Scripture this morning is, uh, this is Elijah's last day on planet Earth. Uh, he's about to be supernaturally taken to heaven. Uh, just pause for a moment with me and come on, just think about that. If you knew this was going to be your last day on the, on the planet, what is it that you would actually do? Who would you call? What would you do? This is Elijah's. Come on, you've got to get the gravity of this this morning, church. It's his last, last day on planet Earth. And he makes a decision to go for a walk. And we're going to pick up the story this morning of this walk. What did Elijah actually do to prepare Elisha for his next? Because I believe one of the things that God is doing in the body of Christ is that revival is not a revival amongst the young people. Neither is it a revival amongst the old people. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I think that there's a generational revival that's actually taking place. And so what we're going to observe this morning is in this walk that Elijah took Elisha on is four locations, uh, four geographical locations that had meaning, they each had significance, they apply to our lives as we outwork the purposes of God. So turn with me please if you can to the book of 2 Kings chapter 2, we're going to read from verse 1, uh, if you have your Bibles, say Amen. If you don't have your Bibles, your verses are available for you on the screen. 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 1. When you've got it, can I have a loud amen? amen? And it came to pass, when the Lord was about to take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha, watch the location, from Gilgal. Then Elijah said to Elisha, stay here please, for the Lord has sent me on to Bethel. Location number two. Starts with Gilgal, goes to Bethel. Verse goes on to say, but Elisha says, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Skip to verse four. Then Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here please, for the Lord, watch the third location, has sent me on to Bethel. Jericho. But he said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. Verse 6, then Elijah said to him, stay here please for the Lord has sent me fourth location onto the Jordan. Started with Gilgal, went to Bethel, then it went to Jericho. Remembering this is his last day, he's investing in the next generation. They land in the fourth location, which is Jordan. But he said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Verse 9. And so it was when they had crossed over that Elijah said to Elisha, ask, what may I do for you before I'm taken away from you? Elisha said, please. Come on, church, please. Encounter City Church, please. Please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. Verse 10, so he said, you have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I'm taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. Then it happened as they continued on and talked, suddenly a chariot of fire, here's a good way to go to heaven. <laughs> suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with the horses of fire, separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Verse 12, and Elisha saw it and he cried out, my father, my father. Watch this. 
He valued relationship more than what Elijah could do for him. He didn't ask, where's my anointing? He said, my father, my father. Yet next generation valued the relationship more than what that person that God has put you under, what they can do for you. You value the relationship, double portion is coming in your direction. My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and its horsemen. So he saw him no more. He took a hold of his own clothes, tore them into two pieces. He also took up the mantle. Come on, a mantle is gonna fall today. He took up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. Gilgal, Bethel, Jericho, and the Jordan. Amen? Four locations. Uh, We call this process in the New Testament discipleship. Discipleship. God is building disciples. God is not interested in followers. He's interested in disciples. The call of the church is for disciples. Jesus said to the disciples, to his apostles, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This process of discipleship that you and I are going to have a look at today, you will find yourself in this process in one of these locations. I'm going to go through each of these locations, explain to you their spiritual meaning, their spiritual significance in the hope that it actually challenges you to move from the location where you are to your next your next place of discipleship. The Bible tells us that on Elijah's last day on planet earth, he walks with the next generation, Elisha, and the Bible says that they start at a place called Gilgal. Uh, Gilgal is known in the word of God for when the children of Israel had come out of uh, captivity, they'd come out of slavery, Uh, There was an uncircumcised generation and God speaks to Joshua and says that they cannot move to the next phase of destiny unless there's a process of circumcision, etc. And God tells them this and he says, because the shame of your past will be in this place rolled away. Uh, Gilgal is the place where at the very beginning of our journey, we experience the grace of God. Uh, We experience the shame of our past being washed away, come on, in the New Testament, by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Gilgal is always the starting place. It's not what we've done, but it's what He's done. It's the grace of God. It's by grace you have been saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest, come on, lest any man should boast. We all stand here and we're able to worship today together. Why? Because of the grace of God. It's because of what Christ has done for us on the cross. I'm grateful today for the grace of God because if my Christianity was based on my works and my efforts and my ability to remain righteous and pleasing to God. How many of you know we've all failed miserably? But we stand here today because the veil of the temple has been torn in two. And just for a moment, just for a moment, I'm about to offend you. And the offense is simply this, that you cannot, if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, be any more righteous than what you are right now. Because your righteousness is not an act. Your righteousness is a gift from God through Jesus Christ. You stand, come on, you stand today, church, in the grace of God. And when you take communion and Satan wants to remind you of the nine things that went on in your life in recent times or in years gone by, you understand today that you are righteous because of the blood of of Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus has cleansed us, has washed us. 
Come on, church, this is the good news of the gospel. The word gospel means good news. What is the good news is that I, you, we've been made, come on, we've been made right with God because of Jesus Christ. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Jesus, Savior of the world. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Why? Because of what Jesus has done. One John says, John said, for as he was in the world, so are we. The beautiful, uh, (laughs) measureless mercy and grace of God has come on our behalf, it's in the person of Jesus Christ. When I got saved here, one of the things that they took me to was a new Christians class. But then when I went to Williton AOG, I had to continue my new Christians class there. And my life group leader, my first ever life group leader was a man by the name of Terry. And he pulled a trick question on the class. And he went around the room and he said, I'm gonna ask a question. Uh, if you were to die today, why would you go to heaven? And I thought, you beauty, I've got the answer sorted. I was told that you're supposed to read three chapters from the book of John every day. And if you're really full on, you've got to highlight a pen, you're underlining the verses. And they all went around in the class, gave their answers. Weak answer, weak answer, We, my turn. All right, Terry, this week I read three chapters from John The next three chapters, I was told you're supposed to speak in tongues for 10 minutes. Then you put on the armor of God. Terry, I've done it all. That's why I'll go to heaven. And he said, Brad, you've done a good job. But that's not the reason why you go to heaven. You go to heaven because of one name. And his name is Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, the Son of God. So many believers today who perhaps even have been serving God for quite a number of years are still under shame. It's still bound by guilt, still bound by the things that went on in years gone by. Those perhaps who've gone through the the difficulty of a divorce and you find yourself here in the presence of God not feeling good enough. Well, I wanna take authority over the spirit of shame today I want to bind it and I want to break the spirit of shame today in this place and rebuke the spirit of shame and declare that the spirit of shame has no power, has no authority over you. You are a child of God. You're a daughter of the King. You're a son of the Most High God. Gilgal, the place of beginning, the place of grace. Elijah walks with Elisha to the next location. They go to a place called Bethel. Bethel's the place that's known where Jacob had a supernatural encounter with God. He saw angels ascending and descending upon a ladder. And it's in that place of Bethel where a promise was not only made over Abraham's generation, but it was made over Isaac's generation, was now made over Jacob. And in that place of Bethel, it's where Jacob has a supernatural encounter with his God. Not only do we recognize in this place the grace of God, but we also recognize we need an encounter with the living God. Uh, One of the things I've done when I've had the odd Sunday free here and there in recent times is, I've randomly popped into a church somewhere. I don't get to do that often, but I've just snuck in. Uh, Church, I'm amazed how many powerless churches there are out there. I'm amazed how many churches don't flow in the anointing of the Holy Spirit, uh, where there is a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. We need the power of God. Come on, we need the power of the Holy Spirit and my prayer for you today is that you would have a Bethel moment in this meeting. That not only would you experience His grace and His kindness, but all of that would lead to a place where you experience 
His power, His supernatural power. We need, come on, there's a hunger in this place. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. Let me keep going. They go from Gilgal to Bethel. And this is where I want to spend most of my time today. And that is they then come to a place called Jericho. Everyone believes, most believers, most Pentecostal believers, we want the grace of God. Uh, Nobody who's a follower of Jesus doesn't want an encounter with his love and with his presence. But Jericho, Jericho in fact is the place where I actually think most believers actually get stuck and don't move on from there. What's Jericho actually known for? I've been to Jericho, I've I've walked around uh, Jericho, it exists uh, to this day. And of course, Jericho is the story in the Word of God where uh, God speaks to Joshua and He tells uh, the children of Israel to march around these formidable walls, walls that could not be broken. And God provides for them, watch this, a strategy that in the natural you would not undertake if you were the general of an army. Nobody walks around walls and then on the seventh day, you walk around it seven times, shout at the walls and then the walls come down. It is a way or a a process of operation that is unnatural to our mind. And God calls Joshua to do something that in the natural seems ridiculous, but God's calling him to step into something where the impossible actually needs to be obeyed. Uh, Jericho is the place of faith. Uh, Jericho is the place where all we're actually relying on is a word that we've actually heard from God. Because God actually puts something in our spirit that seems inconvenient, that in the natural you don't normally act out, You can't walk around walls, shout at them and expect the walls come down. But if God said, then that's what I'm listening to and that's what I'm obeying. It's this place called faith. Everyone wants Gilgal. Everyone wants the shame of the past to be washed away. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Everybody wants the Bethel. Encounter, encounter, encounter. Um, absolutely, I'm the first one there, love it, absolutely. But all of that has to lead somewhere where the people of God are actually willing to step out of the boat and do something that in the natural seems impossible, but watch this, God said, God puts something in my spirit, God puts something there about what is it that we are supposed to do, but in the natural, it doesn't make sense. But how many of you know that destiny comes through the process of inconvenience? Where God will say to you, uh, when was the last time you listened to my voice about uh, your generosity? Uh, When was the last time you listened to my voice about doing an internship in the church for a year? When was the last time you listened to my voice about stepping up and becoming a life group leader? Uh, When was the last time you listened to, but God, the time and this and that, and we try and calculate it all. We try and make it all work. And the Holy Spirit is saying, is there a generation who will operate by faith? Faith, come on, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. Faith is acting without scheming. Faith, come on, faith is acting like it is so, even when it is not so, in order that it might be so, come on, simply because God said so. That, that's faith. Because see, faith, brings the people of God who have had Gilgal, who've had Bethel encounter, and the Lord says, faith without a corresponding action is dead. And God calls us to an arena where we have to let go 
and completely trust in Him. I've discovered that in every arena of where God expands something, it requires faith. In the natural, it doesn't make sense. The calculator doesn't work. (laughs) It's not giving me the numbers that I want. But I'm not listening to that. What I'm listening to is the voice of the Holy Spirit. Did you know that the most repeated verse in the New Testament is, let him who has ears to hear, hear what the Spirit is saying. Faith. Jesus said, when the Son of Man comes, will he find, come on, will he find faith on the earth? People of faith. I've heard Pastor Phil share this morning about some engineer and and who knows what. I don't know the whole story. But one thing I can tell you, that all these processes in church life of expansion and growth requires faith. Requires faith. Requires a people who will say, we are willing to obey the voice of God more than what the natural tells us. This is the issue. The issue is the natural never computes. The natural never actually works out A, B. I've discovered the will of God is a little bit like spaghetti. It goes this way, that way. But what I'm listening to is the voice of the Holy Spirit. Faith, God spoke. Peter, step out of the boat. Uh, Jesus, nobody's ever walked on water before, but nevertheless, at your word. (laughs) That's called faith. This is the, the beauty of faith is this, and that is faith is not some kind of energy that we're trying to like, more faith, more faith, more faith. Whew, I feel it. Faith is this, that I have realized that the character of God, come on, I'm speaking to someone this morning, the character of God is trustworthy. That is faith. That the character of, come on church, the character of God is trustworthy. Because God, here we go, God is not a man that he lie. We see the integrity and the character of God. Some of you eat fruit all day, every day. Who are the big fruiters in the church this morning? You eat fruit, you love it, you carve it up, you put in that smoothie thing, wake the whole house up. You love it. Now watch this. When was the last time you peeled an orange and it turned out to be a banana? Doesn't happen. When was the last time you peeled a banana and it turned out to be a lemon? Doesn't happen. Because God, even in nature, shows us His integrity. What's on the outside is actually what's on the inside. Character, the goodness of God, He's trustworthy when he speaks. When I became a youth pastor back in the day, um, I wasn't earning a lot. Pastor Phil was in fact on the board of the church at that time. I was earning like $2.16 an hour. (laughs) It it was terrible. But I, I, I heard the voice of God God burdened me for a generation of young people saying, bring revival to a generation of young people. I watched friends graduate from university and buy new cars. I I had a 1979 Sigma and it had this huge hole in the exhaust pipe and the carbon monoxide used to come up into the car. God put something on my heart. Others bought a property. Allison and I get married. Uh, she's at university. If I could have the keyboard player, that, that'd be great. And we didn't have a lot. But what we had, come on, what we had was faith. What we had was an unswerving conviction that God is good. Well, we were in a rental property. And, uh, you know, you do what you need to do. 
pay your rental, uh, you know, your, your, your monthly repayments. But in our heart, we wanted our own house. So we'd pray, believe God for our own house. You've passed the salary. <laughs> calculator, stupid calculator, doesn't make sense. <laughs> it's wrong, this calculator's wrong. <laughs> Here's a, let's get a new one from Officeworks. <laughs> but all we had was faith. God said, step out, watch what I'll do. So I felt in my heart not to broadcast it, not to like, I need a house, pray with me. We kept this in our like between it. Mary pondered these things in her heart. Pondered it. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Well, this guy in the church comes up to us one day and he says, um, Brad, do you guys own a house? I'm like, no, we don't. He said, well, we're selling our house and we were wondering, would you like to buy our house? I'm like, sure, let's have a conversation. It's a four bedroom, two bathroom. It's just Alison and I. I don't need a house that big. I said, oh, how big is that? It's four bedroom, two bathroom. And now I'm a pastor. I have to be nice because in the, I'm like, I can't afford that. I'm like, oh, thank you, very nice, thank you. He goes, would you be able to come around this Saturday and look at the house? In the back of my mind, I'm like, there's no, I'm like after one bedroom, one, that, that's, that's my level at the moment, you know. Come on, someone help me this morning, right? So I thought, I better be nice, else I'll get in trouble from the senior pastor. So I thought, sure, I'll come over this Saturday. So I walk around, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, wow, you've got a beautiful house. He said, would you like to put an offer in? I said, oh, you know, the, the truth is, I, I don't think uh, this, this is a little bit out of our price range, but I appreciate your kindness. Um, he goes, oh, okay, no, no problem. Thank, thanks for coming over. Three days later, I get a phone call. And he said, oh, Brad, I need to tell you something about the house. Sure. He goes, the house doesn't, in fact, belong to me. It belongs to my wife's dad, who is Malaysian. And in fact, he owns a number of houses. We told him about you. And he said, well, just ask Brad this question. What can he afford? I got the calculator out and I said, how 6,000 bucks? No, I didn't say that. I, did, I, I made that bit up. I, I needed to be integrous and do the right thing. I said, look, this, this is just where we're at. He goes, well, let me take it to my father-in-law. Goes to his father-in-law. We got the house at this, ridi like, ridiculous. We gave ourselves to ministry. We gave ourselves to be a youth pastor. But in the journey, God knew the desire of our heart. Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give to you the desire of your heart. How? listening to his voice in Jericho saying, God, I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand at all. I don't understand all of the, the, the things with generosity. And But all I know is I've heard your voice and I trust. I don't know why I need to come. I'm speaking to someone now. Why I come to the church one day a week just to volunteer and be a blessing. But I'm doing it because you put it in my heart. You've not done it unto man. You've actually done it unto God. And God becomes your rewarder. Is there anyone of faith this morning? Is there anyone who will step through faith? Because guess what's on the other side? Double portion. Double portion. On the other side is a generation. Now, you, Pastor Phil, I'll, I'll finish with this. I know I've preached very long, very long, but I'm enjoying myself. All right. W watch what happens. You've got to see what happens when a generation, when a group of people decide to step through faith. Uh -huh. They come to Jordan. A double portion comes. May the next generation do more than what we've ever... May those kids that were out the front... May this room be the room 
that is actually the leaders' meeting. May, may, may this generation, I saw them worshiping God. May that be our prayer. Those young people, may that be our prayer. Now, watch what happens, right? Elisha, double portion. He goes over the Jordan, and the people come to him. You've got, you got, you got to see this, right? You've got to see this. And they say, uh, all the women are barren. Uh, there's poison in the water. Uh, Elisha, can, can you, this is his first miracle. And the Bible tells us that through a supernatural process, that Elisha stepped out and he brings a bowl. He puts salt in it, throws it in the water. And watch this. The Bible says that the city was healed. What God is going to do, if we're willing, we're, because you heard Pastor Phil speak about 50 years of history. People decided to step through in faith. Guess what the outcome is? A city is healed with the presence of them. You've got your 50 years celebration coming up. It's an opportunity for this generation to rise and to say, we'll step through the door of faith. Why? so that a city can be healed with the glory. Come on, can we give Jesus a hand of praise in the house this morning? Can we just worship Him just for a moment? Can we give Him glory and say thank you to Him? Thank you, Jesus. Come on, I feel the, I feel the power of God just building just over this place. But i got to do something this morning, to, if you just give me a few moments. And that is, we spoke about, grace, right? Come on, who remembers that, right? At the start of it, the grace of God, and this is simply it. It's God's riches at Christ's expense. Do you know why you're here this morning? Yeah, you're a good person, but it's actually the love of God drawing you to Himself. There are people who are here this morning. You don't know at this point in time, Jesus is your personal friend. There are men, come on, I feel this, there are men in this meeting this morning. And you're yet to come to the place of surrender. You know what I'm talking about. You're here this morning, not because of how this Sunday worked out in September. Do you know why you're here this morning? It's not in fact that you're pursuing God. It's actually because He's pursuing you. You're here this morning because grace is saying to you, it's time to come home. And that's a word for someone this morning. Grace is saying to you, it's time to come home. In a moment, this is what we're going to do. We're going to bow our heads. We're going to close our eyes. And the reason why is just like I did all those years ago, I had the opportunity to lift up my hand and to say, I so Now, just watch, watch me just for a moment. A man pulls out a gun. You don't, the natural human response is, ah, why? You're saying, I surrender. The lifting of the hand is to say, I. Are there any real men here this morning who will say, I surrender to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Is there a young person here this morning who'll say, I'll lift my hand. I surrender to Jesus. Bow heads, close your eyes. Could you pray this prayer after me? I'm gonna ask everyone in the auditorium to pray with me. Say this after me. Those of you who've been followers of Jesus for a long time, let's help those who are praying this for the first time. Say after me, dear Jesus, I open up my heart to you come into my life, be my Lord, be my friend, be my Saviour. Forgive me of my past. Give me a brand new start. I ask it in Jesus' name. 
with every head bowed and every eye closed. If you've never prayed that prayer before, you did a long time ago. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to lift up your hand. The reason why is I want to see you. I want to pray for you. There's a couple of people who are some of the team members here at the church just also helping me as well. So are you ready on the count of three if you prayed that for the first time or you're coming home and you're a prodigal? If you're, oh, there's someone here's a prodigal this morning and God's saying to you, Welcome home, welcome home. On the count of three, here we go. One, two, three, lift it up nice and high. I wanna pray for you today. Come on, you're opening up your heart to Jesus for the first time or you're coming home. Once you put up your hand, you can put it straight back down. Who is there? I'd love the opportunity to pray for you, to pray for you and to welcome you to the presence of God, to welcome you home. Come on, I know there's people here this morning. Lift it up nice and high. I'd love the opportunity to pray, to pray, to pray, to pray, to pray for you this morning. Wonderful, Jesus. Just a few more seconds because I do need to move on. Who else is there? I'd love to pray. I'd love to pray for you today. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. I'm glad I waited for you. I see your hand. You can put it down. Come on, that's one person. Be the second. Be the second. If I've missed you, if you could just put it up again, if you think that I've missed you, I'd love to pray for you. Who else is there? Let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. Let me pray. God bless you. I see your hand as well. Who else? Come on, I want to pray. I want to pray for you today. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Father, thank you for those who've raised their hand today. Thank you for a new beginning. Thank you for a life-changing experience with the living God. Thank you that the Word of God says, if any of us be in Christ, we are new creation. All things have passed away. All things have become new. We declare it and thank you for it in Jesus' wonderful name. And all of God's people said, amen. Come on, let's give those who raised their hand a great clap of encouragement. Those of you who've raised your hand at the end of the service, Pastor Phil will come up and just uh, talk to you about how we can help you and pray for you today. This is not the end of the journey. This is the beginning of a great journey in the purposes of God. Come on, if the Holy Spirit's been ministering to you today, if I could have the musos and singers and you sense... God, I'm at that place. You find yourself in one of these locations. Some of you find your place, find yourself where there is a step of faith that's actually required for your next. Some of you are like, Lord, I've stepped down in faith. Thank you for that double portion. Come on, can we just stand up on our feet right now and just begin to worship Him just right where we are. Worship Him, worship Him, worship Him. Worship Jesus, worship Jesus. Worship Jesus, worship Jesus. Worship Jesus, we worship You, we worship we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Wonderful, 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 Jesus. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. I want to pray for people this morning. I want to pray for people who you've got, yeah, we can keep worshiping. That's fine. Who've got this sense of a call to ministry. Uh, when I say ministry, I'm talking about a fivefold, sold out, full-time ministry. There's a stirring in your spirit. Can you step out of your seat? Come right down the front. I want to pray for you today. I want to pray for you today. Come on, I want to pray for you. In Jesus, come right down, right down, right down, right down, right down. Come on, in faith. Come on, in faith. Faith is acting like it is so. In faith, in faith, in faith, in faith, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come on, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We bless the name of the Father. We bless the name of the Son. And we bless the Holy Spirit. We bless, we bless, we bless, we bless. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, God. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. We bless your name. We bless your name. Come on, just bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, he's moving in this place. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I prophesy over this church, 
I thank you for a missional spirit. Thank you for a missional spirit. Mm, yeah. I sense in Jesus' name, a great burden has been placed on Encounter City Church for the mission field. Jerusalem, come on. Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. Resource will go to missions that in the natural seems extravagant. But the rewarder, the rewarder becomes God. Why? Because you've actually done it unto the, he who lends to the poor gives to his maker. He gives to the poor, lends to his maker. Let God be glorified. And I release in this atmosphere, I release a soul winner's anointing, a soul winner's anointing. This church will be known for seeing many come to Christ, many come to Christ. And I prophesy and declare first generation Christians, those who don't even know, the Lord says there'll be people who don't even know a single biblical story, but yet did not our hearts burn within us when He spoke. And I see transformation coming into the lives of the children's ministry. God says it's it's not just one ministry. The children will have a huge impact. The youth will have a huge impact. The young adults will have a huge impact. Marriage ministries will have a huge impact. But I feel to speak to the Caleb generation. Caleb, your time's not over. Caleb, come on, God's speaking to you. Your time's not done. Caleb, I need you. Joshua and Caleb. So I release the soul when his anointing over this church and I declare many, many souls coming to Christ. Do you not say four months and then comes the harvest? But I say to you, lift up your eyes, look at the fields. It is already ripe unto harvest. So Father God, we open up our hearts to you. We open up ourselves to your call. We open up ourselves to your leading. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Who's been, who's been blessed this morning? Okay, who received an impartation? I love, that's why the people that preach on this pulpit must be imparters before they're speakers. And we've got a speaker and an imparter and a preacher and a man of God. We've got everything in one today. And I just want you to just not rush off. There's Brad and there's Pastor Con and Pastor Allison is going to pray for people. I would just love you to just to soak for this, just meditate on what has actually been deposited inside. Just close your eyes for a minute. I won't keep you much longer, but at the end of the day, what else are you going to do? Just go and drink coffee. Just meditate and chew on what God has just given to you. Throughout the service, He broke chains. He spoke prophetically. He spoke with impartation this morning. So, Lord, we just honour that word that you have given. Honour the Spirit of God that, that brings power to that word and is in this room bringing healing. And Lord, as we go today, as we pray today, as we come back and we intercede tonight and we pray over people tonight and we praise you. Oh, pray for an increase, a double portion coming. Oh, God, that we won't be satisfied. And Lord, we pray the next generation will be holders of that. City changers, nation builders, world changers. Bring them in, Lord. Kavu Adullam, the place where the broken and the disabled and the in debt and the distressed came, but were transformed. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen.